I'm Miguel of Sir Cabalot, and we're here in Sebastopol. Beautiful backyard, as you can see. It's this uh, it's nice, all these trees and flowers, and it's a very gorgeous uh, sanctuary space. And um, and so I have been asked to build a structure uh, for the owner uh, who lives in this house right here for uh, his book. He's writing. He's writing a book. He's an author, and so he wanted a little cabin. A uh, little cob earthen structure um, so he'd feel comfortable being out um, when it's uh, hot, be well insulated, cool inside, and when it's cold outside, be nice and warm, and a place that's creative and very a lot of light and earthy and, um, and very interesting and to help kind of stimulate his imagination. And so, uh, so yeah, so he, he asked me if I could build him a uh, earthen structure. So um, instead of doing it all out of cob or adobe, all solid earth that takes a long time and a lot of materials and a lot of people, I'm doing it with pallets. It's kind of a shortcut. So as you can see here, um, you know, I just I put my uprights up and then um, and I just build it right on pier blocks. I get p ten pier blocks around in a circle. Get my four by four uprights, attach that, and then I put my pallets uh, to that. And then, uh, and then I'll be putting the earthen cob plaster over the pallets, right? And uh, so I think it's a really, really efficient way of building. And if you want it extra insulated, of course, you could just put a pallet on either side of your four x four and leave the space empty in the side. So then you could have like easily 12 inch thick wall, right? And then just put your earthen plaster on either side. And the earthen plaster, of course, then fireproofs it. It makes it super well insulated. It makes it much cooler in the summertime. Um, you know, it's uh, it's beautiful. It's all rounded, and we're just using earth right from the property, right? So look at this. So we're just using this earth right from here, right? We're just getting this earth. I did a little shake test here, and so you can um, see how much sand is in the earth that you're working with, you know. And so you can see here, if you get a close up, you can see it's about 50% sand, 50% clay. Right? You want it to be about 70% sand, and so I'm adding about 20% sand to the mix to make it 70% sand. Right? So, uh, so it's a great mix though. And I'm just mixing it up right here with my feet, doing the, the cob stomp. And I like to use a mud box just because it kind of contains the mix. You can also use a tarp too. And, uh, and so this here, this is my, my ball. So actually, yeah, so this here, this is a cob ball. So um, technically, you wouldn't really call this structure a cob structure. In old, in old England, there was old cob houses built over 500 years ago. They're still being lived in, all out of cob, right? So the word cob actually means a rounded lump of mass, right? So people would be stomping on the the, the earth, making these round balls, and they'd throw them up to the people standing on the walls, and they'd be like 18-inch thick walls, and they'd put the cob balls in there and then let it dry in the sun, and it would plaster it, do a lime wash plaster. And, um, and so these cob structures are enormous. There's um, the, all the mansions and the peasants, they were all built out of cob. So, uh, yeah, so I love it. Um, cob is fantastic. Um, this is actually my, my book here of accomplishments, right? And I am Sir Cobb a lot. And so this is a, a kind of a finished structure. This is at the Solar Living Center up in Hopland. And so again, this is built out of pallets, right? So this is kind of what, what this is going to be looking like with a nice living roof. And, uh, and in my book, I, I, list the, I list the 50 reasons, the 50 reasons of why it's good to cob. And you see, most importantly, it's fun, right? Um, anybody can help did, do it. Children, elderly, disabled. It's easy to learn in a workshop. It's very affordable for using materials right from your land. It helps build a, re a relationship with the earth on your property. Um, it's water resistant if protected properly. It inspires creativity and artistic flair. It avoids using wood, giving us more healthy air to breathe. It avoids using cement, which is unhealthy and causes pollution. The cob walls breathe, allowing you to live in a li living organism, hence the name living earth structures. Right? Um, often the spaces built feels like being inside of a hug. Right? I'm not going to go through all of these, but it's on my website, livingearthstructures.com. Um, but again, most importantly, it's fun. That's why I do it. It's what makes it sustainable for me. All right, so coming inside, wow, the acoustics are much better in here. So you can see the process. So uh, 
I've been working the last couple days uh, putting the cob mix over um, all the windows and you know put this these glass blocks in here and some stained glass and and bottles often I put LED lights inside the bottles which is a nice effect um, you know these bottle stars um, often these will sometimes look like a rocket ship at night and with the bottle star I'll call it bottle star Galacticob <laughs> Um, so, uh, yeah, and these are just wooden shelves. Uh, this is like a, instead of a cubby, I call it a cobby, right? I think every school, you know, should have little, little cobbies for the kids, you know? And, uh, so this was just wood, put some chicken wire over that and put the cob over that. So, uh, yeah, so let me just show you here the process of doing one of these. I like to wear gloves. I find that it's a little easier to, to cob with gloves on. So um, it just gives it a little bit smoother. And so I'm gonna go ahead and put these gloves on here. And then, uh, so I first, I put a clay slip on the pallets. You know, and this is just clay, clay and water, just kind of a clay milkshake-y consistency. And then I get my cod mix. And put it on, put it on about a about a hat, about an inch thick over the pallets. And you can see the electrical. We just you know put the electrical right there. We're just copying right over the electrical line. And uh, so I get it on there. It doesn't have to go on real smooth. It just you know just it has to get on. And uh, and this mix here, I made it a little on the sticky side. It might be 60% sand, 40% clay, so that it sticks really easily to the pallets. I don't have to use any kind of chicken wire or anything to make it stick. So I get it on there, and then and then I'll smooth it out. All right, like that. So you see how fast that is? And so I can probably get this whole pallet cobbed in maybe five minutes. So, you know, five minutes, 10 minutes, I mean, it goes so fast. Uh, what goes a little slower is all this intricate work and everything here too, but uh, but I'm pretty sure that of all the different natural building techniques, this is the most affordable, the fastest, the easiest, um, you know, uh, style technique for super low cost housing. Um, I think it's a great solution. Uh, I call it a palatable cabin, right? A palatable cabin, um, often because it's a living roof. I put uh, edibles on the roof. Um, but it's also it's built out of uh, pallets. Uh, so uh, so it's pallets. Pallets are free. It's estimated that over you know, 20 million pallets are thrown away every year. And the pallets offer a perfect receptacle for the insulation. So instead of doing conventional construction that uses a lot of cement, uh, you know, these two by sixes, Insulated with fiberglass insulation, covered in drywall, OSB, Tyvex, paint, um, wood siding, all this stuff that's uh, toxic um, and costs a lot of money. Um, we're just using recycled wood, pallets, straw. You can also use plastic as an insulation. I think that's a great idea as an insulation material. Cardboard, um, old fibers, um, hemp you could use. Um, and then you cover it in your earthen plaster. And, uh, and it, it's like, it's contained, it is beautiful, and, and, uh, and you can make it whatever color too. You know, this will probably, once it dries, we're gonna do a nice earthen plaster over this and make it nice and smooth and everything. And uh, so, um, yeah, so um, it, it's, it's great also for doing work parties, you know? So we can have people come over and help out. Um, you know, it's, it's great for work parties because it really doesn't take very much skill to, to make the cob and then to put it on the wall. We could have kids here, you know, we could have school groups coming. We could have people with uh, you know, addictions, with disabilities, elderly. Um, I, I think it's a very therapeutic uh, process to, 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 do, to do cob, an earthen building. Um, you know, it's just, and it grounds the body. Being barefoot grounded to the earth is one of the healthiest things you can do for yourself. So, uh, so I'm really excited to, to share uh, this, this kind of building. Um, I want to, you know, build villages of these, you know, where everybody living in them can, you know, have do, do their own style and their own technique. Uh, I also call them eco huts. Eco stands for earthen composite originals, right? So every each one is different, right? And I've actually worked with an engineer to have these palatable cabins designed to code, 
right? So I do have the engineered drawings to have these. It's a, a lot more cement, wood, and steel than I think is necessary, but it also has a living roof, um, and so it's to accommodate that. Um, so, um, but you know, I, I, you can just, you know, see here the technique. This is as simple as this. I just get pier blocks. It's been proven that pier blocks is actually better in an earthquake than if it's in the that poster in the ground. It actually in an earthquake it would bounce more than sway, and actually that makes it stronger in an earthquake. And I and, and another advantage too is that then I don't have to use pressure treated wood. I can just you know uh, use regular recycled wood, and then um, and then I you know just screw my pallets right to my four x four. Once I have it all framed in, it's super strong. It, it doesn't move at all. I mean, it's like super solid. And uh, and then I'll be putting the cob over all this. It'll be an earthen floor. We'll be putting about um, three and a half inches of earth on the floor, and that'll feel really nice on the feet. So uh, and also be a, a living roof. We're gonna have a nice three foot skylight up up on the top. So it's gonna be really nice, bringing lots of light. And uh, yeah, so I estimate another you know, couple weeks of, of working on this. And uh, next weekend, we're going to do a nice work party, Minga, it's called. Um, you know, the word uh, Minga in South America, it's like a work party. It's like a barn raising, like the Amish barn raising. And in the village I was living in, in El Bolson, um, uh, back in 2001, we worked on building a Waldorf kindergarten school out of adobe and cob. And that was really the first earthen structure in Patagonia. They just don't really do earthen structures there. They do a lot of wood and stone and cement. And so, but this earthen school we built inspired this movement called the Minga. And, uh, and they started doing these work parties and, and building like nice, big, beautiful houses out of earth. And it got to the point where the local government signed an ordinance to encourage people to do natural building. You know, they listed all the benefits and all the reasons why we should do, you know, use natural uh, earthen built materials for building our structures. So when I went back some years later, there had been over 400 houses built out of earth in this one little village of El Bolson, um, all out of adobe, out of straw bale, out of cob, wattle and daub, pallets, um, you know, because they, you know, they saw that it makes sense and nobody has money there. They're all farmers and musicians and artists and teachers, but you know, they're able to build the way that they are meant to, uh, what makes sense. And uh, they don't have all the strict government requirements and regulations. And, uh, and so I'm hoping that we can kind of evolve here to get to that point where we can um, really, you know, it can become more into the mainstream. And you would think that after all the fires that we've been having and all the awareness of how toxic all these houses are, that we would be able to, uh, you know, be uh, assimilating some of these alternatives, you know, into the mainstream. And it's starting to happen, but um, we just need some more examples. And uh, so I'm excited to, to share this, uh, this design of the, the palatable cabin. So again, my, my website is livingearthstructures.com. I have a lot of videos um, and information on my website. And uh, if you want to you know, drop me a line and come and you want to participate in a workshop, a natural building workshop, um, I list them on my website. Um, I also have a Facebook page, uh, Living Earth Structures. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm in California, but I, I do, um, I travel. So if, if you want to host a workshop on your property somewhere in, in the States, um, it'd be great to get these spread around. And I also have these on trailers too. I build palatable cabins on trailers. Uh, I call it the, the gingerbread hut. And it's a, it's a two story, has a little kitchenette downstairs and an upstairs loft. And it's a, it's a great little structure. And it shows how really durable these structures are uh, driving down the highway. Um, you know, built out of pallets and earth without a crack on it.